everyone is that uh, as we uh, go through uh, this storm that we are in, um, I want everyone to make sure that you are safe. Um, one, of the, one of the nice things that we do have about the fact that we are uh, in our home is that, uh, and we're distributed, um, we have the means to move around to, to find a safe place for us to be. And so if, uh, if you, you know, sirens go off, all the things that happen, please make sure you're in a safe place so that uh, you, do not, uh, you do not get hurt. Yeah, seek shelter if you need to. Hey, oh, my power just flipped. All right, this is funny. Hey, Michael Coleman, I see you back there. All right, so um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, and get started for as long as we can uh, with this in the midst of the storm. Um, and like I said, if you need to seek shelter, please, please, please seek shelter. Um, but uh, this morning we are looking at resurrection hope. We are looking at uh, what uh, Paul has to say about how important today is. Um, and again, while we would normally be doing a lot of different things, um, we are here, here's where we're at, and this is what we are going to do. So um, thank you, Ms. Jackie, for opening us up this morning and um, going through the scripture with us. So uh, when we talk about hope, um, hope and <laughs> We're going to talk about that uh, when I preach in about an hour or so as well. Uh, but how, how do we how do we at St. Mary define hope? What, what, what's the acronym that I gave? He obviously plans extra. Thank you very much, Sister Coleman. I appreciate that. All right. And so uh, hope is a confident expectation of what's coming up. And so when we look at the resurrection, the resurrection gives us hope. But it's actually... For this lesson especially, it's a little bit bigger than that and something that we need to look at and make sure of. So somebody, um, real quick, uh, can you tell me what it means when I say the gospel? I need you to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? It's the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the story of Jesus. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. And where did you get that from? The New Testament. The New Testament. All right. All right. Well, do me a favor, uh, Sonia. Let, let's go ahead and um, if you would read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through, uh, go 1 through 4. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as, as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. All right, so uh, in the, uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, in the King James, uh, verse one reads, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached, gospel, good news. The good news is not that um, just that Jesus came. The good news is not that he loves us. The good news is, as Sister Coleman already explained to us, is what Paul talks about here in these verses where he talks about um, the good news is how we are saved. How we are saved is good news. And how are we saved? He talks about the fact that uh, the message he is proclaiming is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He, he was buried according and raised again on the third day according to the scriptures. His death is, uh, well, you know, life, death, burial, resurrection. That is the good news. Why? Good news because of that's what he did for us. The fact that we, we, we've talked about it the last uh, few weeks in uh, Bible study as we've walked with Jesus down through up to the crucifixion, which we got to this past Wednesday. And on this past Wednesday, we talked about the crucifixion itself and why that is so important and how he did it because he loved us, not because he, uh, not because he had to, not because there was some other way, and then eh, we might as well just do it this way. But what he did is he died for us. And so when we go out to spread the gospel, 
this is what we need to be sharing. We need to be sharing that Jesus died, that he died for our sins. Why? According to the scriptures. This was written long before. Uh, Paul will later tell us that Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. This was all in God's plan. And because God had a plan, he exercised his plan so that people could be saved. And so if we are telling any other gospel, if we were saying, hey, just do good and, and you'll be saved, if we're saying, hey, just join church and you'll be saved, we are not telling people the gospel because the gospel is centered on Jesus Christ and what he did for us. And that's why we should have hope because we didn't have to do it. It wasn't about us being good enough. It wasn't because we came to church. It wasn't because of all these other things. The gospel is about the fact that Jesus came, lived and died and rose again. I got you. All right. And so because of that, we are, we can be saved. We have the opportunity to be saved. Okay. And so uh, let's see. What did I, what else? Let's see. Oh, here's the other thing that I do want to share about this. Uh, when Jesus talks about, hey, I proclaim to you, enter, I'm giving you what I received. And so hopefully as members of St. Mary that are all here on the screen and anybody who happens to be watching, um, if you have received the gospel, I pray that you are sharing the gospel. Again, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to tell people to come talk to the pastor. Well, on Sunday, you can hear from the pastor. Turn on Facebook and you can see the pastor. No, you need to share the gospel. You don't have to have a seminary degree. You don't have to uh, be an ordained minister. All you need to know is the good news. And what is the good news? Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again according to the scriptures and why he did that so that we might be saved. Okay. All right. Any questions on uh, one through four? Oh, actually, let me see. I don't have a question, but I did. I know I, I did notice I missed something. Um, verse two, it says, uh, through which you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. And so when we are living a life that says, well, maybe there is some other way, then obviously the, the faith that we had in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is in vain. And Paul's going to talk about that a lot more lately. And to be in vain means to be useless. You remember the uh, Solomon in Ecclesiastes, as he wrote, um, uh, vanity of vanities, all is vanities. He's saying everything is in vain. Everything you're doing outside of your relationship with God is in vain. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. So, so everything is drawing us back and really today should be drawing us back to Jesus Christ. He, he is the reason. We sing the song, Jesus be the center of my joy. Well, he needs to be the center of our joy. He needs to be the center of our pain. He needs to be the center of our peace. He needs to be the center of our power. He needs to be the center of us in the midst of this storm right now. And But if we miss on the resurrection, if we miss on the gospel, we're going to miss all of that. All right? And so this is foundational. Uh, one of the things that uh, we teach, I know when I played football, and when we weren't doing right, they would always tell us, okay, look, let's go back to basics. Blocking, tackling, catching. We don't need anything too difficult right now. We need to be in the basics. But what's the basics of the Christian faith? Jesus died, and he rose again. That It doesn't get more basic than that now. We shouldn't have to go to that, but maybe in times of storm, which is so funny when I say that right now with all this going on, but in a time of storm, we need to, we need to find the basics. We need to find an anchor. That, that will hold in the midst of the storm. And that anchor is the fact of Jesus's death, burial, and his resurrection. All right? All right. Hey, Trinity. Yes. Will you please read 1 Corinthians 15, um, 5 through 8? Yes, sir. So... Give me one second. First Corinthians 15. Yes, five through eight. Okay. And it reads, he was seen by Peter and then by the 12. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, 
most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. All right, great. Thank you very much, ma'am. And so what Paul goes on to talk about after he talks about that Jesus was di died and he was buried and he rose again, he he's talking about the fact that he rose again, not only did he rise again, but he appeared to a number of people. Can anybody give me a guess why it's important for Paul to highlight the people that Jesus appeared to? Anyone? Anyone? Well. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, just a guess. Uh, I mean, he told him that he would. Uh, so I, I, that he would, you know, right, come again. So I, uh, I think it would be important that he would follow through on what he said so that they'll know that it's true. Okay. All right. Jackie, you got something? It was about Paul. Was well, that the question? Well, I'm talking about just the fact that in, in verses five through eight, uh, yeah. He goes down and he starts to highlight the people that he that Jesus appeared to. And right. why why would he go through that? Why do you think he went through that? Oh, because they were his inner circle. Okay. All okay, right. I also have I, it, it also uh in my reading I found that uh some people doubted that uh they didn't believe in the bodily resurrection of the dead. And uh, uh the they didn't think it was possible or desirable. Okay. All right. And and so from um, what uh, uh, Sister Lampkins has said is really the big the big thing that Paul's dealing with here. And and yes, Jesus said he was coming back and we got that. And we and he also he did appear to the inner circle. But if you look later, it also says in verse six, he appeared, he appeared more than 500. At one. And so, That's right. so he's making the point is now think about it. Paul wrote this a few years after to everybody he's talking about, they were still alive. And so what Paul is doing right. is he's saying, hey, uh, Jesus got up, and if you have any questions, go ask these people. Well, uh, he's appeared because, because the biggest argument is, oh, well, because we could, it would have been really easy for the disciples if they were making this up. They could have said, Jesus rose spiritually. And even though his body is still there, his spirit is alive. And they could have done that, and no one could have argued with it. But when they said he rose bodily, now people are like, oh, that didn't happen. That couldn't happen. There's no way. And, and Paul's like, oh, no, trust me. He appeared to Peter, and he appeared to the disciples, and he appeared to 500 people at one time. So even if you want to say, well, they was just hallucinating. When's the last time you heard of 500 people hallucinating together? It doesn't happen. <laughs> But, but doesn't it say that it, it was uh, during the ascension that the 500 people saw Jesus? It doesn't say, it doesn't say that specifically. It just says mm -hmm. he appeared to 500 at one time. It could have mm -hmm. been. Now, one thing about the ascension, though, because right after that, we've got Pentecost, and we know there were 100 in that room, 120 in that room. So I don't know where the other 380 would have gone, but, you know, we, but wherever it was, wherever it was, the fact is he appeared bodily. And that's what's separate. Yeah. And so when we talk about what's more important, you know, Christmas gets all the hype. We love Christmas and oh, the baby Jesus, little baby Jesus, little baby Jesus, we love little baby Jesus and all of those wonderful things. Christmas gets hype and Christmas is good news. The, the Christ was born. Christ, the Savior is born. That's good news. And that he died, that, that's, that's really good news too. Him dying is very important. But what the really, really, really good news is, is that he rose again. <laughs> he doesn't rise again. And Paul, this is what Paul's talking about in this entire chapter. If there is no resurrection, there is no Christianity. This is where our Christianity hangs right here. And not just some spiritual, ethereal uh, resurrection, but he got up bodily. And, and so as people will try to argue about, hey, whether or not, matter of fact, um, if you watch today, I think on probably National Geographic or one of these other stations, they'll have the missing books of the Bible or, you know, the real Jesus. And it's funny because the real Jesus and the missing books all talk about the fact that he didn't get up. And, and there's a problem. If he didn't get up, that's why it's not in the Bible. Well, they were trying to hide something. They weren't trying to hide that because that's a lie. Because you can't have Matthew saying, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all say he got up. 
And then the book of Jehoshaphat comes in and says, no, he didn't really get up. He, he passed out and he got, we got a problem. We got a contradiction. Then I've got a real contradiction. Hey, Sister Slater, I see you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got excited. Look at Sister Slater. Don't get me the technology girl. <laughs> but, uh, and, and so the resurrection is that important to us and to our faith. And so if we let anything go, if we let the resurrection go, we've completely lost it. We've lost what it means to be Christian. And so the fact that Jesus rose and appeared to all these different people matters. Because at this time, when Paul wrote this, you could call, hey, Peter, did you really see Jesus? Hey, you guys, did you really see Jesus? Oh, yeah, we saw him. We saw him. Now we've got evidence as opposed to people saying, oh, yes, I was in the spirit and Jesus appeared to me. Yeah. I can't prove that. I don't want that. Jesus is like, uh-uh. I'm bigger than that. I'm better than that. And so when people want to um, argue with you about whether or not the resurrection really happened, I've, I've, I've said this several times before. Give, ask them one question. Where's the body? Where's the body? Right. <laughs> if you find a body that you can certify that this is actually Jesus' body, then I will never go to church again. I will, I'll, I'll take all this stuff down, get rid of all these crosses. I can start doing some of the stuff that I thought I wanted to do beforehand, but I didn't want to do now because I believe in Jesus. But if you find me a body, then we're good. But you know what? They're, 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 they, they, they can't find a body. You know why they can't find a body? Because he rose again. Uh, Amen. There was a thing going on uh, you know, if you go to Israel right now, they will take you to at least two different places that say that that's where the tomb of Jesus is. And uh, somebody made a point, said, look at you Christians, you don't even know where Jesus was buried. And someone said, someone very wisely said, well, who cares? He ain't there. It, it, it doesn't matter which tomb you go to. He's not there. And again, that's what sets us apart. And so when people, um, we've got some people that we know that, you know, they believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus, and yes, Jesus was a great guy, and he was a great teacher, and all of this stuff, but it's not just the fact that you believe in Jesus. The question becomes, what do you believe about Jesus? Uh -huh. If you don't believe the gospel, that he came, that he lived, he died, and he rose again, we don't, we're not talking about the same Jesus. Um, a, uh, a friend of mine, I, I mentioned him uh, often up in Montana, Frank G., he was telling me a story that uh, his pastor uh, was talking about Reverend Payne is coming to speak, and Reverend Payne has done this, and Reverend Payne has done that. And he and another uh, woman who were at the church when I was the pastor, they were getting all excited because they thought I was coming back because they heard Reverend Payne was coming. And uh, eventually they found out that it was like Reverend Rick Payne and not Reverend Robert Payne. So even though the name was the same, it was a different guy. Yes. And so we need to be very careful that when we talk to people, they say, oh, yes, I believe in Jesus. We need to make sure which Jesus they are talking about. Are they talking about the risen Christ Jesus? Or are they talking about just Jesus who was a nice guy? And that there's a real difference there because Jesus, the nice guy, can't save anybody. Only Jesus, the risen Savior, can save somebody. And he appeared to all of these people. And Paul says, hey, he even appeared to me, even when he probably shouldn't have. Somebody tell me, when did Jesus appear to Paul? Road to Damascus. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. On the road to Damascus, Jesus appeared to Paul when he called him. And that's why he says it's one born out of time. Because it was much later, thing, other things had happened. Jesus had ascended. He came back just to see Paul. Why? Because he had something for Paul to do. Uh -huh. And if we ever have a moment where we think we've seen, we've interacted with Jesus, it's because he's got something for us to do. Jesus doesn't just show up just to hang out. Jesus shows up the challenge. Jesus shows up to direct. He shows up because he wants us to move forward in life. And, and so when we look at the resurrection hope, we look at the fact that he is still, I think the song still says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because if Jesus is dead, we got a real problem. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what else we do. All right? Any questions about 1 Corinthians 1 through 8? We're going to continue to keep an eye on this. Let's go all along. Hey, Smith. I got a question. Okay, go ahead. Question. Okay, so 
Yeah. Him appearing to this specific 500. I mean, not 600, not 700, but these particular 500 people. So he chose these particular 500 people because they were all going to be going out to spread the gospel and they had to have a witness. They were first hand witnesses. And if the basis of our religion is or our salvation is on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, they have first hand. So, uh, I don't know. I, I would like to feel special and say <laughs> that he specifically chose because we are chosen these particular 500 people for that reason. Well, I mean, we, we can we can definitely argue that um, that God, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't do anything accident. We, I mean, you, you and I have talked about that several times. There are no accidents. There are no coincidences. But the one thing that we also have to remember is remember what he told Thomas. Uh, this morning, uh, for those of you who don't know, and Linda's mad at me for doing it, but um, I felt compelled to wake up at 6.40, at 6 o'clock and do a, uh, do a sunrise message. And so I did I that. I, I watched the well, Thank you, Vicki. And, um, and the scripture that I read was when Jesus came into the room to speak to the disciple. But remember, Thomas wasn't there. And so a week later, he comes back and he says to Thomas, hey, uh, you know, don't don't disbelieve, believe. And what did Jesus say to Thomas? You, you are excited because you see and believe, but blessed are those who, what? Don't see and, 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 and believe. And still believe. And so while, yes, I think we, we really would love, oh gosh, I mean, how cool would it be for us right now? And there it is, Jesus just come, just come walking in the room like, Jesus, you here. Yeah, that would be cool. But he said, hey, if you want to really be blessed, you don't need that. I did that for these because I had to start this process. But I need you to believe just because my word said so. I don't need you to believe in the miracle. I need you to believe in the man. And if we're waiting for the miracle, maybe that's what the problem is with a lot of the world. The world is waiting for the miracle. But he says, I'll show you the miracle if you believe in the man. And so we are particularly blessed because we haven't seen, but we have been. And so that is our challenge. All right. Anybody else? You know, it also said that, uh, you know, Paul's recount of uh, who saw Jesus was not chronological. It was just an order of importance to Paul. And, and that's when it said that the 500, it, it wasn't any particular person's. It's just that it may have happened during the ascension. Yeah. I mean, but, like I said, it, 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 you know, and, and Paul, again, one of the things sometimes, remember, um, I think I talked to you a while ago, the difference between being prescriptive and descriptive. Sometimes mm -hmm. some scriptures, you know, God is telling us stuff because he's just describing what happened. When he, he described yeah. uh, washing the disciples' feet, he was just telling us that's what happened. He wasn't saying, hey, everybody, you need to be doing foot washing every Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. And some things are prescriptive. He's telling us because, yeah, you need to do this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there uh, shouldn't be. That's prescriptive. And so when he tells us, hey, who he appeared to, look, at, we, we shouldn't get all caught up. Well, why didn't he appear to this guy? Why don't we mention this guy? Because you notice. Yeah. Um, actually, let me see. Yeah, when he talks about the fifth of the 12, here's the problem. Well, I mean, if we want to be really precise, one of, one of the 12 wasn't there. And let's take a look at the window. No, he wasn't, but after he Judas hung himself, you know, he what he appointed Matthias. Yeah, but that was as uh, a disciple. Know, when, when you figure to the twelve. But that's after though, Absolutely. Well, no, he wasn't one of the twelve. But he, he became a disciple afterwards. And, and see here here's here's and, and and the only reason I brought that up is because there are churches and there are people who will argue about that fact right there when it doesn't uh -huh. It doesn't. It, it does doesn't not. matter. Hey, he appeared to the disciples. He appeared, and, and look, he appeared. Yeah. Put, put a pin, put period. Yeah. He appeared. Yeah. Because yeah. he was risen. Yeah. Has, what was the question? Um, no, I was, I was asking, but uh, my first, but what got it on this whole conversation was um, why did Jesus, why did Paul see it necessary to mention uh, Jesus appearing to this group and, or these, these different people in verses five through eight? And so what we you said oh, something about the twelve. What you said something oh. it 
I, I said, you know, it, it's interesting. We can go on a long debate about when it says, and then he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. And the question that yeah. we can argue about and talk about and debate is which 12? What 12? Because it couldn't be the original 12 because Judas was dead. Yeah, but I think he meant the collective 12. He appeared to Peter first. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the collective 12, which included him, is what I found in my research. So, so collective 12? Yeah, all together. He, he appeared to Peter first. Okay, got it. And then he appeared to all of the 12. Yeah, but, but the problem yeah. becomes, but, and so and again, I, I don't want to get off on the tangent except to say, yeah. if we really want to argue, which 12? Because Judas was dead. Judas was one of the 12. So, so we, 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 you know, people will argue and we'll, we'll, they'll write books and they'll do all this stuff. And I say, the bottom line is he appeared. Okay, that's true. That's yes. true. That, that's the bottom line. So that's where we want to get. I just right. got in on the end of it. And I was trying to understand what the conversation was about. Yes, Thank you. Understood. Understood. You want to take over teacher now? No, sir. You should be coming up on the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Somebody, uh, Sister Smith, since you've got, actually, Brother Smith, are you there? Yes, he's there. Well, uh, if he would please read 1 Corinthians 15, 12, and 12 through 14. Okay, kidding it. Somebody needs to mute. Mm -hmm. You say 12 to 14? Uh, yes, ma'am, 12 to 14. Mary, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been risen. Hold on, hold on. And if Christ has not been risen, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. How far did you want me to go? Uh, actually, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I'll start. yeah you can stop there. Uh, I'm going to add, I want to read, because it's not in our Sunday school book, but I want to read 15 through, um, 15 through 17. And it says, moreover, we are found to be false witnesses about God because we have testified wrongly about God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless, you are still in your sins. Okay, so, all right, so what do we think? Somebody tell me, what, what, is, what is all that saying to us? That we're wasting our time if Christ wasn't raised from the dead. Bottom line. Bottom line. Like I said, Christmas is great. And Good Friday is great. But if Jesus stayed dead. Yeah. You, you're going to hear me say this later. Um, and I, a long time ago, uh, somebody told me that the, that the resurrection is God's amen to Jesus's yeah. it is finished. Yes. If, if, if all that time Jesus spent talking about, hey, I'm going to tear down this temple and I'm going to raise it up again in three days. Uh, I'm going to be handed over to sinful men and then I'm going to get up in three days. And all this stuff that he said was going to happen three days later. And if three days came and he's still dead, then how can I believe that what he did was enough? Right. Really, how can I believe in him at all? Right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how, why would I, why would I trust a guy who told me that I'm going to rise again and he never rises again? Right. And, and so the resurrection is that important. And really, I mean, let, let's be honest. Somebody tell me, why do we worship on Sundays anyway? Because we, we, we were birthed out of the Jewish faith and they worship on Saturdays. Why do we worship on Sunday? Is it because it's a Sabbath day? No, well, the Sabbath day technically is Saturday. If we were going to be good Old Testament Christians, we well, worship on Roman, Saturday. Roman calendar, it's something about the Roman calendar, isn't it? No, no, ma'am. No. No. Is it because just the day Jesus uh, risen from the dead then? 
Yes. Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday yeah. is a celebra is supposed to be a celebration of the resurrection on the first day of the week. Why? Because Jesus got up on the first in early on the first day. And Amen. so the early church said, you know what? We are going to commemorate that day. Oh, okay. Not just on the first Sunday after Passover, but we are going to commemorate it every first day. And so, yes, while we get up and get dressed and we do our Easter speeches on whatever Sunday comes, you know, after Lent and all that, Ash Wednesday and all that stuff, really, we should be doing resurrection speeches every Sunday. And maybe that's part of our problem with our faith is that we only celebrate the fact that he got up one Sunday a year. Because yes. we say, because he lives, well, I should be celebrating the fact that he lives every week. And, and again, I think it's hugely important. It's the first day of the week. It's the first day of the week. So when we talk about this is the weekend, this isn't the weekend. Technically, this is the week begin. And how do we begin our week? We as Christians should begin our week celebrating the resurrected Christ. And, and maybe that's why Monday is so bad for so many people, because we didn't do Sunday right. If we would do Sunday right, maybe that would bleed over into Monday and bleed over into Tuesday, because we've lifted him up so high. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things will be given unto you. And so we do that by celebrating the, the resurrection. Is that important? And so when people say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in the resurrection, impossible. Impossible. You, you can be spiritual, I guess. You can believe in something, I guess. But if you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then quite frankly, Jesus is a liar. Yeah. Jesus is a liar. Peter, Paul, all these, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're all liars. Because they all said he got up. But in our scientific expertise, we know he didn't get up, but we still believe in him. Now, what kind of sense does that make? What, 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 what kind of sense does it make that he didn't do anything he said he was going to do, but we still believe in him? We don't do that with anybody else. And I'm not sure why we would do that with some dude who just lied to us. So the resurrection becomes that important. And uh, when we talk about, yes, he, he, died on, he died on the cross to pay for our sins. But somebody tell me, when you go to the store to pay something, pay, when you go to the store to buy something, what is the proof that you bought it? Your receipt. Your receipt. The fact that you walked out of the store with it is not proof. Because <laughs> Sonia knows that because she gets called all the time at work about people walking out with stuff. So the receipt is proof. The resurrection is the receipt that the bill was paid in full. Amen. That, that, that's, that's why it's important. And when you're wondering, are my sins paid for? Pull out the receipt. Pull out the resurrection. And when should we pull it out? Oh, we got to wait till April. Mm -mm. We pull it out every Sunday. Every Sunday, we pull out the fact that Jesus rose again. All right? Amen. Okay. All right. Let's go 14. I got 14 minutes to do the last eight verses. I might almost be able to do this. Uh, Mrs. Payne, will you please read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23? Um, which one? Verses 20 through 23. Okay. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as we all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Okay, great. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, hold on, I got to do. Gotta, I need a visual display. All right. So, um, 
So we talk about first fruits. So remember that the Easter season, all of this happened around Passover. And um, so they would do Passover. And then right after, uh, shortly after that, they would actually have another um, ceremony where they would have first fruits. And first fruits was when they would take the first things that had been grown and they would take them and they would wave them before God to say, hey, you did this for us. And because you did this for us, we are giving it back to you. We are waving the first fruits. And so Jesus becomes a sort of first fruits. He is a forerunner for us. He is letting us know what is going to happen, what is going to be available to us because he rose again. So his resurrection isn't just good for him. It's also good for us because we, we all have a sin nature. Why? Because we sinned. Now we were born with a sin nature. David said, in my mother's womb was I conceived in iniquity. The, the, our, the sin is in us. That's why we don't have to, anybody have to teach their children how to stay? No. Anybody have to teach their children how to steal? Anybody have to teach their children how to lie? We never had to do that. Why? Because they were born that way. They were born with sin in them. And because they were born with sin in them, they need a savior. We need a savior. And so we have a sin nature because of what Adam did. And that's what he's talking about in um, verse 22. Well, really 21 and 22. Death came through a human being. And that human being was Adam. When Adam decided that he didn't want to uh, follow God and decided to follow his wife, and that's a whole other, we'll do that Sunday school later. Um, uh, death came into the world. And because Adam died, now we all die. So now we all have to deal with this death that was not God's intent. And so to fix the problem, God did, God, since the problem started with a human being, God needed a human being to fix it. And so that's why when Jesus came, he had to come through Mary. He had to be, he had to be 100% human and 100% God. Because if he was not, he couldn't do what needed to be done. In the beginning, God gave the earth over to human, humanity, and so he needed a human to take it back. And that human for us was Jesus Christ. But again, God, 100% God, 100% man. He never stopped being that, okay? And so when he died, he, that's why he could die on our behalf. But then when he rose again, he was the first fruits. It, it, it's the hope that we have that it's not over, that we have opportunity to come back, that that. Um, that well, really, in another sense, in this life is not all there is. We're not just going to be put in the ground and go to sleep, but we are going to rise again. Why? Because he rose again. He is the first fruit. And at his coming, those who belong to Christ. And so this is one of those verses, if you remember, uh, well, unfortunately, we've all been to funerals. And one of the things about a funeral, you'll hear somebody probably read First Thessalonians 4, where he talks about that uh, the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And all of, and he says, comfort one another with these words. There should be comfort in the fact that Jesus is coming back and he's taking those who are his with him. And so in the midst of all of the death, quite frankly, that is around us right now, where we find hope is in the resurrection of Christ, because the resurrection lets us know that death is not the end. Death has no more power over us because we belong to Christ. Is it Christ the first fruits? And then those, then at his coming, those who belong to him. Do you belong? You know, we talk about St. Mary, you know, we want to uh, believe, bless, become, bestow. Uh, there's a belong. And not just belong to the church, because it's one thing to belong to the church, but we need to make sure we belong to Jesus Christ. Are, have we joined, you know, do we have, a, I have a, I am a member, I, y'all, I think I, y'all should know this already, but I am a certified Kansas City barbecue judge. I, I, I have been certified by the Kansas City Barbecue Society to go out and uh, judge barbecue and tell people whether it's good or not. Yes, the things your pastor does. And he really enjoys it. I know. But the reason why I, <laughs> you don't um, never you don't never cook none. I, 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 did that, I, I did not say I was a certified Kansas City barbecue cook. I said, see, listen to the words. I I'm know a certified what you said. Kansas City Barbecue Society judge. Uh, <laughs> and but when I show up at an event, they don't just take my word for it. They want to see my card. 
They, they, they want to make sure that I actually have a card that says certified and got a little number on it in there. I've been trained. Well, Jesus doesn't well, give us a card. Our if you can judge, you ought to be able to cook. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so, I can do this. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, there. All right. So um, they, they don't ask for uh, my, our card is our lifestyle. The lifestyle we live lets people know that we belong to Jesus. Like I've said to you several times before, if you go somewhere and you tell them, oh yeah, I gotta go to church tomorrow, and they go, you go to church? You might question whether or not you belong. Because going, because being a Christian is not just the fact that we carry a big Bible and we know some hymns and we know how to say praise the Lord and bless and highly favored. It's a lifestyle that we live. That's the card that we carry. And if we are carrying that card, then there should be no doubt that we belong to him. Okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Miss Vicki. Yes, sir. Will you please read 1 Corinthians 15, 40 through, 42 through 45? Yes, sir. So it is with the resurrection of the dead, what is uh, sown is perishable, and what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body and it is uh, raised a spiritual body. But there is a physical body and there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Okay. All right. Great. So, so here, here's where our hope is. And actually, uh, this entire, uh, our lesson scripture was the entire 15th chapter. And uh, if you, uh, you know, if you need some encouragement, I definitely recommend you read the end of the chapter. Our, our Sunday school book uh, cut us off early. Uh, but the verses that come after this remind us, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? because we have the victory always in Jesus Christ. And why is that? Because even though we are weak now, we won't always be weak. Even though our bodies are perishable now, we will not always be perishable. There is better coming. And so when we, call, when we talk about hope, resurrection hope, the confidence we have that it's going to be better, we're going to do better, we're going to live better. We have that confidence, not in us, but in Christ. And why do we have that confidence in Christ? because he is a life-giving spirit. I, I, I've quoted this a lot lately, and maybe I'm supposed to preach on it or something, but Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the life. And the life. And, and when we talk about I need life, and I need to get a life, and we needed all that, again, bringing us all the way back to where we started, that starts with Jesus. Now, and not just Jesus, the good teacher, not just Jesus, the miracle worker, not just Jesus, the baby in the manger, not just Jesus, the son of Mary, but Jesus, the resurrected Christ, the, the resurrected Christ. He, he, he did it all, and he has all power in his hands. And I'm going to preach in my sermon in a minute, and so we got to slow down. Um, but, uh, but we need to hold on to this, and this is why we have hope. Anybody feeling a little weak right now? I, I went out yesterday, and I got to see a lot of you um, when I went out, and um, and it was weird. It was weird that there was in the back of my head there was a little trepidation. Was like, Ooh, what, what's going on? What what what, what, what happened? I ain't seen and talked to other people in a long time. But you know, in the midst of that weakness, we have to remember the strength that we have in Christ. In, in the midst of our discomfort, in the midst of our confusion, we have to remember that our Christ is bigger than all of that. He's beaten all of that, and because he has, victory is ours. Now, yeah, it might not look good right now. It probably looks real bad right now, but our faith is not in how it looks. Our faith is in the God who loved us. What Paul says in Galatians 2.20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives within me. And the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That should be a life verse for a lot of us. 
because we've got to remember that he took our place so that we don't have to pay for our sins. We, we can live not just a full life, but a life that is full, a life that is full of love, that a life that is full of power, a life that is full of peace, a life that is full of joy. doesn't mean it won't have problems, but it will have something to overcome the problems with. And so as we move into and we move deeper into this Resurrection Sunday, I want you to remember that the resurrection matters, not just today, but every day. And when we come back next Sunday, guess what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate the resurrected Christ. Because okay. if we celebrate the resurrection, our faith is useless. If we don't believe in the resurrection, we are still stuck in our sins. And if you're stuck in your sins, that means you need to pay for them. Anybody? Anybody willing to pay for it? Didn't think so. And Amen. so I just wanted to encourage you that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Are there any questions, comments? Sister Smith, I know you have some really cool slides. We can get online later and we can go through them because, you know, I, I know. I uh, really did, Pastor. I said, it was nothing but that old devil. All my <laughs> internet went out because the storm was right here at Blanchard. Really, it was really bad up here. Okay. <laughs> so that's, but if people start calling me talking about they can't get in, like Alice, and oh, I can't help you. <laughs> I'm, 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 in I'm in there now, ain't it? Because I called <laughs> Sister Payne and she hooked me up. Oh, it was back up by then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, saying you didn't call and tell me how to get in, so Sister Payne gave it to me. You had the Easter. Well, I wanted to say something. I went on read the rest of the book. Good morning, everybody. And it was talking about the, select, the selectable body and the territorial body. And the, it was talking about the selectable body. It's like a higher degree uh, relating to heaven as a higher sense. And so it gave me imagination. It was talking about, you know, using the example of Sister Eula, like, talking about, you know, the stars, the earth, and Mars, Pluto, and Venus, and went on, but it was saying that the territorial uh, was something solid, like stuff here like on Earth, but the selectical body, if it's natural body on the outside uh, of the Earth's atmosphere, and then I went to, like, looking up in the uh, biblical and it was saying it was just like a high degree of glory re relating to heaven in the highest sense and oh also God. taking me to luke the ninth uh chapter the 26th verse showing you examples of the selectical uh what uh that would be and then it taking me to matthew the sixth chapter the 28th through the 29th also to first peter uh the First chapter, the twenty fourth verse, talking about territorial, uh, territorial uh, body. So uh, also, I enjoyed it talking about using like some of the things like um, Rosa Park and what she yeah. had said. So I enjoyed uh, reading the Sunday school lesson throughout uh, what he was saying, and it put me in a mind uh, frame. <laughs> Amen. Um, but Pastor, one thing yeah. that I, I really emphasize, and I know uh, that you've already said it, the, the, the simple gospel message, because sometimes people just, they don't know what it is. And that's yes, that, that he died, he was buried, and he rose. Amen. And as you said earlier, if he didn't get up, he'd be Whoa. like Buddha <coughs> and Muhammad. And mm -hmm. nobody saw him, them get up. Amen, amen. So he is amen. without the resurrection. It's like a dead savior can't save nobody. Amen. <laughs> so, amen. So like amen. Said, if, and the uh, thing that helped me too, Pastor, when they start talking about the resurrection body and okay. us in particular, it, and you've given this example. If you plant a kernel of, of corn, it doesn't come up like it looked. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and God has created us and we go through trials and tribulations and we be beat up, but uh -huh. we're we going to come out glorious <laughs> when we see him. So yeah. those are only two things I wanted to say. 
Amen. Out of my 18, out of my 18 slides. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, look, uh, we've got about 28 minutes before we will uh, join together again um, for our <coughs> Resurrection Sunday service. And um, I, I am praying that the storm has passed us by. Ooh, and, but, cool. you know, uh, I think that was fairly symbolic that we we could still do what we needed to do in the midst of the storm and be together. And so I thank God for that. I look forward to seeing you on Facebook and seeing you on um, Zoom uh, as we continue to celebrate the risen Christ. And with that, um, Pastor, yes, ma'am. I want to say to you and Mrs. Payne, thank you for the effort you put in on the communion. It's like nothing we have seen. You are you guys are great. <laughs> in yeah. your church, in your church too, you are great. Amen. And thank you so much. That was so greatly appreciated. Uh, uh, praise praise God for um for why is my grape juice white? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, hey, uh, that is a very good question. And for everybody, for those on Facebook uh, or who might not know, um, we uh, we went out, actually, we went out uh, because I, I didn't want to celebrate communion with cookies and milk or anything like that. Um, not that I'll say anything, but went out and bought the little cups. Now, I'll be honest, I hate these cups. And if we were in the church, I would never, ever use these. But, hey, we're in a different time. And yeah. so I went online and I ordered uh, these cups. And as, if you can see, let me see. Get it real close. You can see this is a communion wafer on the top with grape juice. And you'll notice something very interesting about my grape juice. Yeah, it looks like my, wine. My grape juice doesn't look great. And so here, here is here is the uh, confession of your pastor. Uh, they sold out the grape. Oh, well, you know what? I don't know. I ordered it because all it said is wafers and grape juice. And so I said, cool. And then it came in the box. I need to show you the box. The box says, Grape juice. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about being white. And so when we opened the shop, <laughs> we were just as shocked as you are. That's, that's the wine. Jesus turned into wine from the water. You got that, some that, of that you know what? Hey, trust me. When we do it, I'm going to testify. <laughs> I'm going to testify. We're going to have a miracle. Hey. And, and so I didn't even know people used white grape juice. Yeah. Uh, but I know it now. <laughs> And uh, we gonna use white grape juice uh, 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 because that's what we got. And if you don't want to use white grape juice, then I'll come by your house and you put out a bottle of Welch's and I'll. Oh no! <laughs> it was that was so thoughtful. So, yes, it was. So yeah, but uh, I uh, yeah, that, but we in a new world. And, and we not uh, overlooking your chauffeur who drove you to all these locations. A shout Amen. out to Miss Linda Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Shout yeah. out to her and them cookies, cause I already I ate mine last night. <laughs> you and me too, and Vicky. Said that was gonna be for this morning uh, breakfast, so we can have fellowship. I said, Oh Lord, I already ate the cookies. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, You ain't by yourself. I ate up all mine yesterday too. Okay. Uh, we love y'all. Why do feel bad? Okay, so hey, uh, okay, we got 24 minutes now, and I'm gonna go and try to get my mind right so that I can, uh, so that I can, uh, we can have this service. And so I'm very excited. Uh, I never thought I'd be this excited about having Easter service in my house, but. Uh, hey, man. Yes, and uh, I serve the risen Savior, and so yes, sir. With, with that. Um, Let's uh, hey, let's share together in the uh, in the church school creed. I believe in the I church, church, school. church school must grow and must grow. grow. And grow. And I, and I must make it a high priority to make it make so. Every member of Christian, every Christian, a worker, every everyone trained, so that working may not be this we yes. 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 Amen. 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 We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Happy Easter. Hello. Same Hello, to you. Happy Happy Easter. Easter. I see Priscilla on the line. Hey, Happy Easter, Miss Michelle. 
Yara still yeah, says connecting the audio, so I don't know if she made it in. Yeah, Facebook who is guys in about half an hour. I saw Priscilla. She was in. Oh, Priscilla. She's she's in. In. Look, she's, she's right there. I can unmute to respond back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, can you unmute her? Uh, no, her audio is still connected. Oh, okay. yeah, her audio is connected. Alice, you may 